Welcome back to the Brushing Up on Algebra series. This video is going to go over the r basic rules of exponents. And uh, this particular video is going to be more theoretical than example oriented than the other videos. But it's still going to be example oriented in general. And it's also um, going to be quite a bit longer than probably all of, well, maybe not all, but at least most of the other videos. So I decided to go ahead and list out the basic rules of exponents. Um, but these are definitely some things that you want to have memorized. Not in the sense that you can just list them out, because nobody does that, uh, but in the sense that you can use them quickly and easily without having to look them up. And it, it being able to do that pretty much takes practice. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, if you have your old algebra textbook and you have a hard time with these, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to start out with an example, and then uh, example of how to simplify an expression this way and also then go into selected explanations of these individual rules by selected I mean I'm not going to do all of them and there's also not going to be proofs it's just going to be explanations so let's go ahead and go into the first example so I have this uh, 8x cubed all over y squared z to the negative 1 all to the power of negative 2, well, I see that negative exponent and I immediately think, oh, well, I can just go ahead and flip the fraction. That's the first thing that I see. It doesn't really matter what order you do these in, though, as long as you do them correctly. You can use uh, different orders and different, different, you can use the rules in different orders and still come up with the same results as long as you use them correctly. <clears throat> so I have y squared z to the negative 1 all over 8x cubed. Uh, now the whole thing is squared. I just flipped the inside of the fraction. Now I see this z to the negative 1. And I want to bring that to the other side of the fraction bar. And z to the first is just the same thing as z. So you can change the sign of the exponent by bringing it to the bottom. And z to the first will also just be z. And now, I can go ahead and distribute this too. So y squared squared is going to be y to the fourth. And 8 squared is going to be 64. 8 cubed, sorry, that's not 8. x cubed squared is going to be x to the sixth. And z squared is just going to be z squared. That's looks kind of weird. OK. So, y to the fourth, I didn't mean to do that, y to the fourth, all over 64, x to the sixth, z squared, is going to be the simplified form of this right here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and do the selected explanations. So, explanation of number one, x to the m uh, times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. This is actually sometimes called the exponent, exponential law, and it's the basis of all of the other exponent rules. So you can actually derive everything else from this one rule. So, uh, I'm, I'm not going to really prove it per se, but I'm going to go ahead and just give you an explanation for why it works the way it does. So if we have uh, x cubed and x squared, well, that means we have three groups of x's. So that's going to be x times x times x. And then two groups of x's, x times x. So we have five all together. So whenever you have this like this, you have x cubed, x squared, um, you have three groups of x's and two groups of x's. That just means you have, I said groups. You have a group of three x's and a group of two x's. So that means altogether you have five of them. It's the same thing up here, but this is uh, quite a bit more abstract. You have m groups of x's and n groups of x's, and that just becomes x to the power of m plus n. So that's why number one works. Remember that was called the exponential law. That's the most important one. Uh, x to the m over x to the n equals x to the m minus n. So let's do this one by example again. x to the fifth over x cubed. Well, remember that by the basic exponential law from the previous example, 
or previous explanation. This x to the fifth is the same thing as x squared times x cubed. And remember from the previous video, I think it was the immediately previous video, this x cubed cancels and we have just x squared left. This 2 is 5 minus 3. So what you're doing here is you're saying you have m x's, you're going to cancel n of them, and you end up with m minus n altogether. So that's why you subtract whenever you divide. <coughs> and the third one is x to the 0 equals 1. Now this is sometimes counterintuitive because people think that anything to the power of 0 should be 0. It's actually not like that. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, except for 0. I'm going to do this off to the side here. 0 to the power of 0 is actually undefined. And the reason why it's undefined is because... Um, Oh gosh, I don't remember. That. Sal Khan has a good video on why that's not defined, um, but it it just doesn't work out that way. Is any zero to the power of anything will be zero, but anything to the power of zero um, will be one. So if you come at it from different directions, you can't really tell which ones it's supposed to be. So uh, zero to the power of zero is undefined. And that's what we call an indeterminate form. Whenever you get to some uh, later parts in calculus. So x to the power of 0 is 1. Let's, ex let's explain why this is. So let's say we have x over x to the power of m all over x to the power of m. Well, anything divided by itself is just going to be 1. 7 over 7 is 1. Um, 20 over 20 is 1. Any number divided by itself is just equal to 1. Well, let's do this another way. x to the m over x to the m from the previous video, that's going to be the same thing as x to the m minus m, which is going to be x to the 0. So that means that this, these two things have to be equal to each other. So x to the 0 has to equal 1 no matter what x is. As long as it's not 0. <laughs> so now, x to the negative, win, negative n equals 1 over x to the n. This is another one that uh, is just a little bit counterintuitive at first, but let's explore why it works the way it does. Let's say we have x to the n times x to the negative n. Well, that's going to be the same thing as x to the n plus negative n by the basic uh, law of exponents. Well, n plus negative n is going to be 0. Well, now let's also look at... Uh, oh, sorry, that's going to equal 1. Uh, now let's also look at what happens when we have x, uh, sorry, x to the n times 1 over x to the n. Well, that's going to be, remember that this means division, x to the n divided by x to the n. And anything divided by itself is equal to 1. So that means that this has to be the same thing as this. So these two things are going to have to be equal to each other. And that's what we have here. x to the power of negative n is equal to 1 over x to the n. Now let's skip number 5 and go on to number 6. x to the m all to the power of n is equal to x to the m times n. Don't confuse this one with uh, x to the m times x to the n. This one's um, this this remember that this is x to the m plus n. So uh, sometimes people get confused. When do I add? And when do I multiply? Here we have x to the m all times x to the n, and that's when you add. Here you have x to the m all to the power of n. That's when you multiply. Okay, let's go ahead and erase that uh, to get some valuable space. Uh, so. I'm going to go ahead and give an explanation for this without without having a um, a formal proof. So if, if we have x to the fourth all to the power of 3, well that means we have x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth. That's just what the cube means. Well, this, you have 4x's, then 4 more x's, then four more x's, so that means you have three groups of four x's, which is just going to be 
12 x's all together. And 12 is just going to be at 3 times 4. So the reason why you do it this way is because you, you say that this is, um, this is in groups of m x's, so that means you're going to have m times n x's all together. Now let's go on to number 7. x, y to the n, x, y quantity to the n uh, equals x to the n times y to the n. Do not confuse this with this x plus y to the n. Because this has a plus here. That means it's something completely different. The way you would expand this is using something called Pascal's Triangle, or the, the binomial expansion theorem. Uh, and do not make the mistake of saying that x to the n, x plus y to the n is equal to x to the n plus y to the n. Remember I had a brief video about exactly this, except I talked about specifically the square case. So do not make this mistake. It's a it's it's a big mistake that a lot of people make, and they will uh, your teacher will nail you for it. There's a good chance that they will uh, count the entire problem wrong without even looking at the rest of it if you make that mistake. So uh, now let's let's look at this in a little bit more detail as why this works out the way it does. Let's say we have x y cubed. Well, that'll be the same thing as x y times x y times x y and remember that with multiplication order doesn't matter so you have three x's and three y's so this three ended up distributing to the x and to the y <clears throat> so when you you say okay we have if we have three groups of x, of x's and y's, that means we have a total of three x's and three y's. So if you have um, in groups each one that has exactly one x and one y, that means you have a total of n x's and n y's. So that's why it works the way that it does. Now let's skip eight and nine and go on to ten. If you have the nth root of x is equal to x to the one over n, uh, so that will, let's. Take a look at, at look take a look at it this way. If you have the nth root of x to the power of n, well what does the nth root of x mean? That means what number when you multi when you multiply it by itself n times gives you x. Well, if you take whatever that number is going to be and then raise it to the power of x, you're multiplying it by itself n times. So that means you're going to get back x. And now let's look at x to the power of 1 over n. So, this is the same thing as 1 over n times n. Remember from the rule that we have that x to the m times, to the power of m is equal to x to the power of m times n. Well, 1 over n times n is just going to equal 1, so this is x to the 1, which is just equal to 1. So that means if you have the nth root of x to the power of n, and x to the 1 over n to the power of n, they both end up being x, so the inside of these parentheses are going to be the same thing, and the nth root of x is going to be equal to x to the 1 over n. Alright, that concludes this video. Uh, definitely the longer vi one of the longer videos, if not the longest one. I'll see you in the next one.